Hello, Chris Samardich here, Brotherhood of Light Show, current YouTube channel. As promised, we're going to go back to our psychedelic music of 1968, and we're going to cover three different artists, which are all I consider, or they were considered at the time to be acid rock or heavy music. And coming from the 60s, there was Hendrix who was out in 67 and so was the cream and they were some three piece hard rock bands, but uh, these bands created vocal sounds and instrumental sounds that were much heavier than anything before their time. And they all had big hits. So let's get on with the show here and go uh, back to the screen share and get back to the show and introduce what we're doing here. And uh, here we go. So I'm going to get my laser pointer going again here. There we go. Laser pointer. Laser pointer. Okay. All right, here we go. So uh, here's the title. The Birth of Psychedelic and Heavy Metal Music. Blue Cheer is our feature band. And it's 1968, Acid Rock is a theme of our show. So here, this band right here is Blue Cheer. And uh, they are, the album is Vince, Vince, Vincibus Erupsis. And you can see they just have this heavy metal, hard look, hard rock look to them. Uh, the other artist we're going to cover is going to be Big Brother and the Holding Company. And we're going to be featuring Janis Joplin on vocals on some of her heavier pieces, and uh, which is also considered acid rock at the time. And then this guy, Crazy World of Arthur Brown with the song Fire, which is a totally uh, incredible kind of British heavy metal sounding song before there was any heavy metal and uh, with some incredible screaming vocals by him. So let's go to the next slide. Oh, shit, I went too far. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so we're back at Blue Cheer here. So Blue Cheer, uh, there's it's my light show. It's a blue plate special. And uh, I thought that just was appropriate for their artwork. Um, so as you can see, we've got uh, the short guy here, Dickie Peterson, the bass player and the raunchy vocalist. And then we've got uh, Paul Whaley on drums with the garbage can massive drum sound, uh, which is like a drum fill going on during the song constantly. Uh, and then we've got Lee Stevens on guitar, who was not really lead guitar, but he made up for it in playing. His style was, uh, he played kind of like uh, a lot of, feedback and super heavy rhythm and uh, using fuzz pedals and wah-wahs and stuff like that and created he, where he made up for his leads by his interesting chords and rhythm that he did and created this heavy rock sound, okay, which is known as acid rock at the time. There's our next slide. So as you can see, these guys have an attitude, just the way they look, the way their artwork on the album cover is, the title. This is the one of their ads here on the right, which has just got all kinds of attitude. And, you know, the record company has released them and uh, they've done pretty well with. Uh, then you've got Osley, Stanley Osley here, quote, which if you can read it, is pretty crazy kind of 60s psychedelic talk. Uh, and it's signed by, or it's, you know, notable by Stanley Osley III who is the famous LSD chemist of the Haight-Ashbury in San Francisco. And so uh, they go into, uh, there's a couple songs here that they did, which are really heavy. Uh, so you, you got their hit, Summertime Blues, okay, which is right here, uh, which is an Eddie Cochran song, and they just changed it. And so during this period, Dickie Peterson claims that he was taking a lot of LSD and when they were recording the record, they were on LSD and they just were going for it. And they didn't really, they kept changing the sound of the song and just went, you know, went in the studio and went crazy. 
And then the result was this heavy version of this old 60s rock song, rock and roll song, which sounds like modern day hard rock or heavy metal. I, a lot of people will argue that, but I'm just going to say it's acid rock. And then you've got Dr. Please, which is, a, and then uh, Out of Focus, and uh, then there's some covers. Uh, but those those songs, this album is really heavy. If you want to get an early proto hard rock album, this is the one. And uh, influenced by this intense LSD use of this band. Uh, but the amazing part is that this album charted really well. So obviously the audience in 1968 wanted this kind of thing, you know. And so Summertime Blues was number 14 on the singles chart. And then the album was number 11 uh, for that year. So, I mean, when, when you get up in the top 10 records, I mean, you're making money, you know, then they were touring and they were playing the Fillmore circuit. So they were, they were doing good, man, you know, and people wanted this heavy raw sound, you know, it was like acceptable, which now we all know is, has become like Black Sabbath and Deep Purple and uh, Led Zeppelin, you know, sort of, took off the next year they all released albums the following year in 69 and in 70 and uh and this music became you know mainstream so let's go to the next one and uh so this is their follow-up album they also released in 1968 the end of the year and it's called outside inside and the reason they named it that is they recorded half inside and half outside on a pier in New York, they wanted to play so loud. They wanted to capture this loud. They were, they were known as the, as the most loudest band of the day in 1968, 69. They were just, that was their reputation. And if you can see this album cover, it's a painting, it's split here, but it was a gatefold. It folded out and, you know, they look like they're high on some kind of drugs. And there's all kinds of drug paraphernalia throughout the painting and pictures. He's, guys running with a joint here and marijuana plants and hard drug stuff and mushrooms. And so they're definitely influenced by this psychedelic period. Okay. So now we go to uh, the gatefold when the album opened up. And so when I'm like a 13 year old kid with getting this album and opening it up in 1968, I'm like, wow look at those marshals and look at those drums and wow you know they, it just looks like heavy nobody was ever had this many amps on stage like this band they 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 were the ones that invented the the giant marshall stacks triple and double behind the band so it was just uh you know it was just there was the head they not only sounded heavy but they looked heavy and then let's go to the next one so okay so then they created uh there's the gatefold again with this weird psychedelic picture these blurry colors and then you've got down here and then you've got uh, them inside the uh the back of the album and then uh there was no real notable songs on this record that were hits like summertime blues but here they are and you can just see they have an attitude and then there's dickie just rocking on the bass and he played that, you know, super aggressive hard rock bass with a pick. And uh, so uh, no, this album hit number 90 on the chart. So it just didn't follow up as good. And, uh, and so this version of the band, these three guys ended up splitting up after this record in 1969. Uh, unfortunately, uh, so we're going to go to the next shot, which is uh, there's there's Paul playing out on the pier where they recorded it outside, obviously. And then here they are high as a kite. You can see them. And uh, this is the painting of Outside Inside album cover in one piece. And this is uh, Lee Stevens playing at Fillmore East. And this is Lee Stevens with Linda Eastman or soon to be Linda McCartney. And then this is a family dog poster where they're headlining at the Avalon Ballroom. And uh, so, you know, they had this short-lived career with these three guys, but they created this classic heavy rock sound. A lot of bands um, copied them, and uh, they might be considered the first heavy metal band. That's arguable. 
Um, they're definitely the first acid rock, you know, and their first heavy band. And then also a lot of the grunge guys um, copied their sound. They, they were really like the Melvins really liked Blue Cheer and uh, the Mud Honey. If you listen to the guy from the Mud Honey, his guitar sounds just like Lee Stevens on these early Blue Cheer albums. So they influenced the grunge scene too. So they could be kind of proto doom rock, but not really. They're more like heavy rock. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next artist. So then we have the next artist, which is Big Brother and the Holding Company. The album is Cheap Thrills. And there's the Rick Griffin. I'm not Rick Griffin. Uh, R. Crumb album cover, which is cool. It features all the songs in, in kind of comic book form. And then here's the gatefold with the giant light show. This film more east. And uh, I always, once again, when I was 13, I saw open this thing up and went, oh my God, look at that light show. And then, um, so the songs on this record are, uh, there's a big hit. It's called uh, Peace of My Heart. And uh, this album did uh, number one for eight weeks. I mean, so they made some dough on this. And then it also hit uh, Peace of My Heart was number 10 on the singles chart. So, um, Big Brother had a hit, you know, even though, and then the same thing with these guitar players, they're not really, you know, the greatest guitar players, but they're using all this volume and, you know, just going for it and creating this heavy acid rock sound. And Janis Joplin is doing these vocals that are just out of this world, you know, this high pitch tremolo sound coming out of her it's like you, you can't even believe that somebody's singing like her uh, it, it's just amazing and so uh, i'm gonna go to the next slide here and so there's janice on the back of the record and there she's singing and she was truly an amazing vocalist and the later janice joplin albums don't feature her in these uh these live performances on cheap thrills up uh, where she's just screaming out of this world. I mean, it's just amazing. Here's the uh, gatefold with Joshua Light Show from the Fillmore East again. And uh, so uh, you can see her there on stage in the middle and we'll move to the next one. And so here they are in, uh, you know, the promo shot, but you can just see they got an attitude and they were just, you know, they were, they were just a kick-ass rock band who didn't care. You know, they just, they were, they're known for their acid rock. Okay, and so here's here's a Big Brother and Holding Company. Here's a picture that our Crumb did of Janice, which I, you know her just shattering windows with her vocals. And the couple songs, "Summertime." There's a YouTube video of her rehearsing it or doing it in the studio off this record, and it's just amazing to watch her vocals in that. And then. Uh, Ball and Chain is this long live song they did, and uh, it's from Winterland, recorded live at Winterland Auditorium in San Francisco, and uh, she just blows your mind vocally. She just does does stuff with her vocals, which now like people like uh, Bon Scott copied, or you know, without Janis Joplin, you probably wouldn't have Bon Scott, or you probably wouldn't have Axl Rose. They kind of to do similar things she does vocally. Uh, so she was the pioneer to do these crazy screaming vocals, uh, vibrato vocal sounding stuff. And then here they are, Big Brother and Holy Company Avalon Ballroom, and that's uh, James Gurley. And then there they are with the, you know, Big Brother and Holy Company Ball and Chain DVD you can buy. It was recorded in Katie. KQED in 1967. So there's, you can actually get the performances from this band. Also, there's uh, the ball and chain from Monterey. Uh, the Monterey Pop Festival is really amazing. I mean, you can see like she's doing these vocals and just basically knocking the audience out. They're just blown away by her. The, uh, the video or filming of the audience is just, you know, they're just completely blown away by her vocal or her performance. And then there's a sleeper band, which not too many people may know about, but they also had a huge hit. And it's The Crazy World of Arthur Brown, and the song is called Fire. Now, if you think Kiss was the first band that painted their face, 
No, it was Arthur Brown. And not only did he paint his face, but when he sang fire, he had a headpiece which was on fire, which you can see in this picture on the left here. So he was way ahead of his time. Now, if you listen to fire, it's got a bunch of cool keyboards. It's got all kinds of orchestrated stuff. And he does these Ian Gillian, Robert Plant, uh, Rob Halford screams in it that are just, he's the guy that invented that scream technique. And, uh, you know, that on pitch scream that, that uh, Ian Gillen does uh, during Child in Time. Well, on fire, he's doing the same screams. Uh, in fact, he thought when Deep Purple got rid of Ian Gillen that he was going to get the job, but his face painting and cliche stage act was not accepted by Deep Purple. They wanted something a little different. But anyway, so Arthur Brown, Fire. Okay, and that song was number two in the United States in 1968, number one in the UK, and number one in Canada. So, I mean, the, the audience, uh, you know, this early, coming off the 60s, in the late mid-60s, was ready for this heavy music, which is amazing, uh, it, you know. And these were these were big hits. These three bands. I mean, it's just incredible, you know. And they were considered to be called acid rock at the time. Okay. And now here's uh, Blue Cheers, 1969 album, new and improved. And so, uh, according uh, according to Lee Stevens, he quit the band because the other two guys were taking way too many drugs. And uh, they got this guy, Randy Holden, from Sons of Adam from L.A. And he filled in. He looked a lot like Lee Stevens, filled in. And they play, played a lot of live shows with him. And then they went in and recorded the record, new and improved. And they got, he recorded one side. And it's just a psychedelic classic. It's called Peace of Mind is the song. It's actually about 15-minute psychedelic classic song. Uh, on side two of this record and then he quit probably because the guys were too high or something and then Dickie ends up getting a bunch of guys to come in and fill in and they do this kind of country rock band sound so you got one side with six songs that are country rock including a Dylan song and then you've got this Randy Holden psychedelic classic on the second side. So that would, if you're into psychedelic music, that'd be worth checking out because it's really incredible uh, psychedelic music by, um, uh, by Randy Holden, who's still alive and still plays music today. So, uh, and uh, Blue Cheer did continue to go on and reform the band many times. And they ended up uh, with the two original guys uh, and this guy, Duck Dunn, who, uh, play guitar for the last 10 years of their career and then the 2000s, maybe up to 2015. And they have a live album out. It's pretty cool. So they did continue to go on until Dickie Peterson passed away. So they were, uh, they, they had a good career. And of course, Summertime Blues is always in, in their catalog. So let me go back to stop screen share back around to my blue cheer blue room. And, uh, I have not decided on what I'm going to do for my next psychedelic uh, artist, but uh, I'll be producing another one in a week or two and uh, we'll be getting it back out. But uh, these guys have a special place in my heart. I love, I loved all three of these artists when I was a young man and uh, listened to them and uh, they turned me on to heavy music. And uh, so I hope you guys enjoy this show and uh, we'll be putting it out next week or so. And uh, I also had the, the follow up to my Almond Bets tour that I just did. Uh, and that shows out right now. So maybe check that one out, folks. Also, uh, give it some likes and some views. All right. So signing off, we'll see you guys next time. And I hope you enjoy heavy music of the 60s psychedelic acid rock. <laughs>